Well, let's talk about macro photography. Now, by macro photography, I mean the kind of photos where you're so close to your subject that your viewers will never have seen that kind of perspective with their own eyes. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my favorite tips and techniques for capturing truly incredible macro photos with your iPhone. Today we have a partially cloudy day and also I'm recording this in a forest park so there's a lot of natural shade that's going to hit my macro photography subjects and that is actually a good thing because just like when you're shooting flowers you want to avoid direct sunlight hitting your macro photography subjects that way you'll get the best possible images. So now that we've talked about the conditions we're ready to start shooting and the first thing that caught my eye was this bush right here that has a lot of little flowers in it. Now, if I open up the camera of my iPhone, you're gonna see that we have several flowers here in the frame. And while those flowers are definitely beautiful, I'm not too pleased with the composition we have here. I think it's gonna look more interesting if I can isolate just one flower and really get closer to capture a macro shot. So I'm gonna isolate this one flower here on the right and you'll see that if I'm using the 2x lens, that telephoto lens, I can actually get fairly close to it and I can fill the frame with just one flower. If you look at the flower more carefully, you're gonna see that there are these little stamens where the pollen is found. So I think if I could get even closer to those stamens, I could capture a more interesting shot. If I try to do that with my iPhone, I'm gonna have a problem. As I start to get closer and closer, at some point, everything just goes out of focus. That's because the lens of the iPhone has something that's known as the minimum focus distance. In other words, once I get too close to my subject, the lens of the iPhone can no longer focus and I can no longer take a sharp photo. So what can I do to fix this? Well, I need to use a macro lens. Let me show you. So this is a macro lens that's made by a company called Sandmark. So when you buy one of these lenses from Sandmark, you're also gonna get a special case and you can simply screw in the macro lens or any other lenses you might buy from Sandmark in the right slot. And I'm gonna screw it on where I have the one X lens of my iPhone. So that's the top slot right here. Now this is a 10 X macro lens so in theory, I should be able to get about 10 times closer to my subjects. So if I now start to get closer to the flower, you'll notice that I can get much closer than this because it once again goes out of focus. If I want to emphasize those stamens in the central part of the flower, I need to get even closer. So how can I do that? Well, I can take that macro lens and instead of using it on my original 1x wide angle lens, I can actually unscrew it and I can put it on the 2x lens of my iPhone. So if I now switch from 1x to 2x view, you're gonna see half the screen is covered by this black area and I just see a tiny corner that's not covered. Now, why is this happening? Well, it turns out that the iPhone camera app is set up in such a way where if there's not enough light in the scene, the iPhone will automatically use the wide angle, the 1x lens, even if you're shooting in 2x, to compensate for that lack of available light. And that's what's happening here. Because I'm shooting with that macro lens, the iPhone assumes it's just a little too dark. So how can I make sure that the iPhone is only gonna use the 2x lens when I put the macro lens on top of it? Well, for that, I need to use a third-party camera app. And I've tried many apps for this purpose, but the one I like to use is called ProCam. Inside the ProCam app, when I'm using the 2x telephoto view, half of the screen isn't covered by the other lens. Now, when you first open the ProCam app on your iPhone, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen. Now, I personally don't use most of these manual adjustments on my iPhone, because to me, the beauty of shooting with the iPhone is being able to focus more on the creative aspects of photography, to think more about the light and composition that you have in your shots, now, ProCam is a paid app, so if you want a free alternative, you can consider using the Lightroom mobile app for the iPhone. Before we start shooting with this app for the first time, there are just a couple of things I'd like to change in settings. So for that, I'm gonna tap on Set at the bottom right corner. So first, we have Image Stabilization, and I'm gonna make sure I turn that on. 
Now, this is important because with macro photography, my subjects are really close to me and even small hand movements or even just a little bit of handshake could potentially result in a blurry photo. But with image stabilization, at least some of that handshake will be reduced. So I'm gonna keep that on. And now as I scroll down, there's the default photo format. So I'm gonna switch that to HEIC, which is gonna give me a smaller file size while also saving more colors along with my images. So that's really important here. So now I'm gonna close the settings menu by tapping on set at the bottom right again. And finally, at the top of the screen, I'm gonna make sure I press the SMRT icon, which stands for smart. And this essentially means that the iPhone is gonna use whatever image processing techniques it has built in to give me the highest photo quality possible. Now I'm finally ready to start shooting. As I get closer to this flower, you'll see that for a while nothing is in focus. So with the macro lens on top of the 2X telephoto, I need to get much closer in order for the iPhone to acquire focus. But that's a good thing, that's what I want. I want to really bring all the attention to the central part of the flower where we have those stamens. And just about here, you'll see that the iPhone has finally acquired focus. At this point, I'm gonna carefully frame up the shot and you'll see that everything is moving and shaking a lot because the iPhone is so small and that flower is so small that even a tiny, tiny hand movement results in a massive camera shake. So I gotta be extra careful to keep the iPhone still, but also I just have to take a lot of photos. So once I've found that perfect distance from my subject, I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter. And I'm gonna do this multiple times to make sure that at least one of these shots is in focus. Like this image right here. We're now so close that we've taken that flower completely out of context. And now those stamens where the pollen comes from really start to stand out. This is the shot I was looking for. And of course, you're never gonna see this without a macro lens. But now, let's keep exploring this area. And I think I should be able to find another shot that's gonna look really interesting. I've now found another set of flowers, and actually I think these ones are even more interesting. Let me show you. So I'm gonna try to frame this up, and you'll immediately see that I have a bit of a problem. That sun that is partially hidden behind those clouds is still affecting my photo here. So as I start to get closer, you'll see the shadow of my iPhone that starts to enter the scene. And also you'll see that there's just a bit too much sunlight on the flower. So in situations like this, the diffuser that comes with your macro lens is gonna be really helpful. The purpose of this diffuser is essentially to diffuse or eliminate any direct light that you might get shining directly on your macro photography subjects. Let's try to frame this up again. And here you'll immediately see that the flower we're working with is a lot more saturated. Another challenge I'm working with here is the wind. These flowers are constantly shifting. They're moving around. That's not a good thing for me because any small movements really get amplified when I'm shooting macro. So I'm gonna take this flower between my two fingers and now I'm using my other hand to hold the iPhone steady. And you'll now see that I have a lot less movement Besides those incredible colors that really stand out to me, what I'm also seeing here is a circular composition. So ideally, I'd be able to kind of include the full circle in my frame, but if I move the iPhone back just a little bit, everything goes out of focus. Now, one thing I could try is to remove the macro lens from my telephoto and put it on the wide angle lens, but honestly, that would be too wide. And then all those little details of the flower wouldn't stand out as much. So. I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna have to settle with a compromise here, but that's okay with me because those stamens look absolutely incredible. And I'm gonna be careful with the focus here. I'm gonna try not to move my hands or my iPhone, and I'll grab multiple shots to make sure that everything is in focus. But now, let's see what else we can find in this forest. All right, I gotta be quick here, but right in front of me, I have this old decaying flower, and on top of that, we have a bright green bug that's eating the flower. Let me show you. I'm looking for the kind of framing where that bug is coming in 
from the left hand side and the rest of the flower is going to be to the right but this is super challenging so i'm going to keep taking a lot of photos all this time to make sure that at least one of them turns out the whole thing is moving in the wind and these bugs or any insects that you have in the frame are notoriously difficult to capture so this is a really tricky focus situation and the best thing i can do is just keep shooting try to get that framing right and look at those eyes of the insect so here, you'll see that I have perfect focus. So both the flower and the eyes of the insect are in focus. Now, capturing insects in macro photography is notoriously difficult. You need a lot of luck and a lot of patience. And in general, when you're taking macro shots like we did today, you really have a chance to show the world to people like they've never seen it before. You can take relatively ordinary subjects, such as flowers or pine trees, and you can get so close to them that people will have never seen them from that vantage point. And if you take some time to find some truly unique subjects for your macro images, the results are going to speak for themselves. If you share photos like this on social media, people are going to be totally blown away because nobody ever sees the world from this perspective. And that's what makes iPhone macro photography so special. This video was a free preview of my iPhone Photo Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to take stunning photos with your iPhone. So if you'd like to take the kind of photos that will leave your friends and family speechless, please take a look at the full version of iPhone Photo Academy. You'll find a link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now, and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.